also, if this was a normal 5-1, but what I did was I added that 7th in there. It's very crunchy. We just want it resolved. Yeah? So that 5-7 just strengthens that tension a bit more for a need to resolve. My name is Hui Min Pang. I'm a pre-service teacher at Darwin High School. I currently study full-time at Charles Darwin Uni for the Graduate Diploma of Teaching and Learning. I major in music and a minor in biology. Today's lessons, the activities are for the unit of music theory. There are performance standards that the students need to comply for these activities, such as uh, knowledge and understanding, analysis, and ability to understand the content. The trick is, since these are crotchets, and that's a semiquaver, so they really sing all the way to when the soprano sings as well. So you include that one in the chord. So the doubling will be, oh. yeah, because they, they are sung across. So what happens is, I'll just play it on the piano. Okay, this is what happens. So the bass, tenor and the sub, uh, alto sing at the same time and then the soprano joins in. So that's still part of the chord, even though it comes a little bit later. So you include that in the doubling. At the end of this lesson, I hope to see from the students that they can use prerequisite knowledge from last terms. So they should be able to find the key of the melody, construct the chord table, and be able to harmonize with basic primary chords. This is what I expect from the level threes and fours. And hopefully they will ask me questions um, throughout the class to see if they're on the right track and if not then I will just give them guidelines to facilitate their thinking. What did I do? Inverted. How did I invert it? So Waki, did you see what I did? Now have a look at this note here. Yeah, I put the bottom note up the top. Now these are the default settings. We don't have to write any numbers on top of this figured base. Now let's have a look at the interval. So this is one. After I put the example up on the board for the level threes and fours, I give them about 10 minutes to do what they already know how to do from last term, which is to find the key and construct the chord table. That usually will take a few minutes. Now this is independent learning and I will go on to the level fives and deliver new content to them. And then when the level threes and fours, I can see that they're done with their activities, then I'll give the level fives an independent task, which they work on their own. Then I shift back to the level threes and the level fours. Once you finish circling the notes, you will have a look at them. This one's D, F, and A. Yeah, circle notes. So what chord goes best in there? in this bar. Mm -hmm. So we write the Roman numeral one, so that's your next task. The way I structure my classes, first I would have the model on the board and together as a class we work um, in classroom discussions first. That way the content is delivered as a group, they learn from each other, they learn from me and then I give them the independent group work. And after that, if they don't know what they are, um, if they're having trouble with what they're doing, then I go back to them and say, okay, look, this is what you've done wrong. Let's do it together as a class again, if it's a really common problem. And then it's just model feedback, model feedback. To deliver such a high degree of flexibility within the classroom, the pre-service teacher has to be able to move between the groups very, very succinctly and quickly. So you don't have time to think, okay, now what am I teaching next? So the content knowledge is under scrutiny and, in, and challenged all the time. So they have to be able to move very, very quickly from the student to the board to the piano and, and backwards and forwards between the groups and speak appropriately with each of the groups. So some of the t music terminology that we would use with a group say a, a level four theory group, we can't use with a level one theory, we have to actually repackage that language so, because it's just too confusing for them. So the content knowledge has to be very, very strong to, to cope in that type of setting. 
What are the features of a good learning design that you have found useful for constructing a lesson plan or sequence? What do you understand content to mean? And what amount of content is it reasonable to include within a lesson?